Hey guys, I'm Brian. Recently, I was out flying, uh, practicing some maneuvers, and I made a mistake. Uh, but that mistake gave me an opportunity to study something I've always been curious about, which is pilot reaction time, how long it takes to uh, react to a situation and then solve a problem. It's something I've always been curious about, so uh, let's jump into it. How long do you think it will take you to react when things don't go the way you planned them? I'm gonna show you 20 seconds of video and then we're gonna break it down and talk about it. First things first, what you just saw was not an emergency, it was a mistake. I'm gonna break the number one cardinal rule of YouTube aviation, which is never film your mistakes. People will turn you in, they'll come after you, uh, they'll call you names, I'm over it, I don't care. Uh, I think what I learned in this is worth sharing, so we're gonna, we're gonna go through it. Um, number two, I wanna talk about action versus reaction. We're gonna replay this video and I have a timer at the bottom and I wanna show you the difference between my reaction time, which I felt was super impressive, versus my action time, which was crazy embarrassing. Uh, so I want to run through that and I want to make a point here. I'm not manufacturing drama. There's plenty of other YouTube channels where we almost died. We're lucky to be alive. <clears throat> Go watch those if you want that kind of stuff. I, I just want, this is very rarely an opportunity on my channel uh, for people maybe to actually to learn something and glean something from it. Um, I've had worse scenarios. Um, probably the worst thing that happened, I once had a wrist pin break inside a cylinder while I was flying and that was the only time I've ever had to tell anybody how many souls were on board. And that was a, um, a moment early on in flying. We can, we can talk about that too, because that's that was a learning moment for me. All right, to set the scene a little bit, uh, my airplane has four fuel tanks, two 30-gallon tanks and two 15-gallon tanks. Uh, me and another pilot were out practicing some maneuvers, and I miscalculated my fuel burn a little bit, and I ran a tank dry, which is really boneheaded. Um, but it's given me this opportunity to kind of review this and break this down and see uh, what, what was good and what was bad about my reaction. So let's break it down. All right, so as we walk through this video, we experience a loss of power. 1.14 seconds, my hand's on the fuel switch, which seems super impressive, but I took no action. We run it forward a little bit. Here, just past three seconds, I'm looking at the fuel gauge. A little after six seconds, my hand's no longer on the fuel switcher. I didn't switch tanks, and for some reason, I start looking at the panel to see if there's any other issues, even though I know exactly what the problem is. It's almost like I wanted something to confirm that I needed to go switch those tanks. At some point while doing this, my stupid brain's like, dude, just switch tanks. So at nine seconds, I finally reach down and actually switch the tanks. And then over here at 14 seconds, I put the fuel pump on. 18 seconds in, the engine's back to life. Anyway, I wanted to do this because I've always heard in training, um, you know, when your instructor pulls the power, you're supposed to count to five or count to three or count to some arbitrary number because that's how long the human brain takes to realize, oh, we've got a problem before it starts to act. And I always kind of wondered like what that was. Uh, I've heard different numbers. So, and it's probably different for everyone. Um, I was really proud of how quick, I mean, my hand was on that deal, but I was very embarrassed at how I was like, I didn't follow through. Like, there's definitely fuel in the other three tanks just if you if you change it. Like, you're not going to do any harm at this point by switching it to a tank that you know has fuel. Uh, it also would have cut out a little bit of the going like, well, what, that's, you know, and I'm getting confusing information and now I'm trying to find other problems. If I'd done that and the engine had spun back up, I would have been like, well, we know exactly what it was and, you know, we went on with our lives. So here's, here's an interesting takeaway. I mentioned an issue I had where I had a wrist pin snap. Uh, years ago, I was flying a plane, and inside your cylinder, you've got the piston, and you've got this arm that it's on, and there's this big metal pin that goes through it, and mine snapped. And so you're flying along, and now you've got disconnected metal slamming into each other. It's violent. It vibrates. It's very scary. Uh, this is at a point when my instructor had freshly just drilled in over and over and over A, B, C, D, uh, airspeed, which is your best glide, B, best place to land, C, checklist, D, declare emergency. That was not my reaction. Uh, my reaction was, Brian, what are you doing? This is a hobby. Why are you putting in yourself? You just want to have fun and you want to fly planes. Um, and this is very real. And I remember being mad at myself. And then immediately I was embarrassed that that ABCD thing didn't, you know, click in. 
Um, so I started kind of going through that and I, then I called up ATC and I said, Hey, I'm having a problem. And we had a discussion about whether I wanted to declare an emergency and I didn't feel I needed help because I was still making a little, little bit of power. Um, and I thought I could get back to the airport. And so I said, let's hold off on that. Um, if, if I have the problem gets worse, we'll, we'll do that. This particular situation was better than the prior one because uh, at the onset of, of a surprise, I didn't start questioning my life choices. I jumped into action. Uh, so immediately I started going through, and while you don't see me pull out a checklist, there's certain memory items we have. Um, when your engine's uh, not functioning properly, you want to check your fuel tank, your uh, mixture. You want to make sure that your uh, fuel pump is on if you have a lowing aircraft. So there's a handful of things that you, you, you know, and just jump into action. We were fairly low. So I think if we were you know, higher up, if you're over um, unhospitable terrain, that's when you start doing your, your best glide, you're looking for a place to land, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the other, other benefit to this, this situation was we were actually in the process of, of actually practicing engine out maneuvers. Um, we'd spent the last hour you know, pulling the engine, finding the field, getting the plane down. So I was kind of already in that mode, which even makes my reaction time a little bit more embarrassing because this is exactly what I'd been sitting there going through. Um, but it was a, a very interesting learning experience. So 18 seconds from the moment of being aware that there was an issue to resuming normal flight. Um, the weird takeaway here is that at one second I had my hand on the fuel switcher and if I had followed through and switched the tank, we probably could have shaved 16 seconds off of this incident. Um, 16 seconds isn't a lot, but it could be in a different situation. So the fact that I was ready to take action and then I convinced myself that that wasn't the problem and then started looking for a problem somewhere else was silly and a waste of time. Um, if your engines quits, switch your tank. I have, I have four tanks on my plane. Three other tanks had fuel in them. All right, I want to play the clip again, but this time let's focus on the pilot in the right seat who is significantly more experienced than me and in the clip significantly less rattled. Uh, you can see there are moments when I kind of seem startled or confused and he has just jumped into problem solving mode and doing uh, exactly what he should be doing. Uh, the, the juxtaposition of, of, of how he was, uh, I guess, internalizing what was going on versus how I was internalizing what was going on was, was completely different. You can tell uh, there's a more experienced and a less experienced pilot in this cockpit. Uh, let's watch. As soon as he detects the loss of power, his eyes go straight to what I believe is the manifold pressure, RPM gauge. The cluster there has the fuel tanks as well, so he's gathering information very quickly. At the time I've decided it's not a fuel issue, I'm scanning the panel, he's eyes outside looking for the best place to put the plane down. He immediately showed me an airport that was just off our right wing. And by the time I'm switching tanks, he's communicating that we're inbound. So the takeaway here was, had I followed through with the action while I was trying to find out what the real problem is, I could have been the one looking for a field and communicating. And I could have gotten all that done in less than 18 seconds. Instead, I didn't switch it. I took 18 seconds of time. If the engine hadn't come back, now I'm looking for a place to land. Now I'm communicating and I'm 18 seconds further into the situation. I'd say the takeaway for me here is next time uh, I reach down for the fuel switcher because the engine's doing something funny, uh, don't second guess myself, just switch it. So that's all I have. Hopefully there was something you can take away from this. I know most people come to the channel because they want to laugh. Um, a baby seal walked into a club. It's my favorite joke. I put this out there because there might be someone out there that could learn something from it. I certainly learned something from it. If you want to tell me I'm dangerous, I'm hazardous, I'm a terrible pilot in the comments, you have the right to do that. But that's why people don't post their mistakes on uh, YouTube. And I think there's definitely value in these things getting out there because I learned something from it. There's probably somebody else out there that can learn something from it. So there's definitely, I feel, value in being able to share these things with people at the risk of someone calling a FISDO or you know, just telling me something horrible. I've seen people in comments on other videos like this that probably should stop because videos like this can help other people avoid these types of situations. That's why I'm filming it. I'm not creating drama or anything like that. So hopefully you learned something from it and hopefully you guys fly safe, fly smart, and I'll catch you in the next one.